Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. It's a fine place to get an education. It has one of the largest public libraries in the country. A wide choice of good colleges and universities, such as UCLA. For advanced study in special areas, there are places like Marineland, or the Los Angeles County Law Library, the Art Institute, But in spite of the opportunities, there are a few people who insist on learning the hard way. I try to help teach them. I carry a badge. It was Monday, April 28th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Bunko Fugitive Division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Didion. My name's Friday. We had received a phone call from a neighborhood antique shop in the University District. The owner said that he had been taken for over $200. He said the man who took the money was a Los Angeles police detective. That doesn't look like it. Like what? Like the badge the fellow showed me. Well, now, how did his look? Well, uh, it was different, you know. Not exactly. Are you fellas sure you're policemen? Yes, sir, we're sure. Is that a police car outside? Yes, sir, that's right. Looks like an ordinary car to me. Well, it's supposed to. We're from the detective division. Well, you got any other proof I could see? Now, look, you phoned us about 10 minutes ago and said you lost over $200. We'd like to help you. I guess nobody but policemen could know that. But you can't blame me for being careful now. Suppose you tell us the whole story. Well, this fellow came in about 10.30, maybe 10.45. Said he was a police detective. Could you describe the man? Oh, a young fella, maybe 25, 30. Nice looking, clean cut, you know? Nothing special about him. You think you'd know him if you saw him again? <laughs> you bet your life I would. All right, go on. Well, he showed me this badge. Not exactly like yours, but it looked official. You got a good look at it, did you? Well, good enough, I thought. It wasn't no orphan any police badge, if that's what you mean. Do you recall his name? Uh, yeah, he said it was Sergeant Haspel. You know anybody by that name, Joe? No, I don't. You better check personnel records. Right. Can I use your phone? Yes, go ahead. What happened after he showed you the badge? Well, he said he had information that counterfeit $10 bills were being passed over the counter here. Yeah. He told me to take all the money out of the cash box and let him examine it. At first, I handed him just the tens, but then he said he'd have to look at all of it. He examined the money here? Yeah. Held it up to the light and felt of it. Picked out one of the tens that he said was counterfeit, but it looked the same as the rest to me. Did he ask you where you got the ten? Nope. Just told me to lock up the shop and come with him to the station for questioning. And he kept the money? Yeah. Said it'd be booked as evidence. Okay, go ahead. Well, uh, after we got out the front door, he reminded me to check the back door to be sure it was locked. Now, that made me think he was a policeman. Yeah. He said lots of burglaries happen just because people are careless about leaving their doors unlocked. Gave me quite a little lecture about it. So you went to check the back door? Yeah. And when I got back, he was gone. Do you think you could identify a photograph of the man? Well, I think so. I'll sure try. I guess he wasn't a real police detective, huh? No, sir. I kind of suspected he wasn't, as soon as he disappeared with the money. But, uh, where did he get the badge? We'd like to know that, too. There's no record of any Haspel on the job, Joe. Well, that figures. You want me to come down and look at the pictures now? Yes, sir, if you could leave your store for a little while. Well, I'll miss a few sales, but I don't care. I'd like to spot him while his face is fresh in my mind. Well, let's go. Well, aren't you forgetting something? 
looks set. You better check the back door. We took the victim, George Amon, down to the office. He gave us a full description of the suspect, and we put out a local broadcast. While Amon was still examining mug books, we heard from other detectives in the Bunko Fugitive Division. They remembered questioning a suspect about two months previously in regard to impersonating a policeman. We located a mug of the suspect in r &I under the name of J. Wade Mackin. The victim positively identified the photograph as the same man who had taken his money. Tuesday, April 29th, we were attempting to trace the suspect through a series of former addresses. He did, huh? How about a forwarding address? Well, where do you send his mail? Oh, I see. Okay, thanks very much. You doing any good? He left there six weeks ago. The landlord doesn't have any idea where he might have gone. Said they moved out because his wife was expecting a baby. I got it. Bunko Fugitive Friday. Yeah, Jim. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk to him. Send him right in. You bet. Bye. Something on our boy? Might be. A fellow named Huberman just came into the desk. Jim says he seems pretty upset. He lose some money? Probably. He asked for a Sergeant Haspel. You Lieutenant Friday? Yes, sir. You Mr. Huberman? That's me. Don't know why they sent me in here. I want to see Sergeant Haspel. All right, sir. Would you have a seat? Maybe we can help you. Who are you? My name's Smith, Frank Smith. Howdy, Smith. How do you do, sir? What can we do for you? I'd rather talk to Haspel about it. He work in this department? No, sir. Just what is it you wanted to see him about? Uh, my examination. Your what? Examination. My examination to be a policeman. How old are you, sir? 52. But I don't feel a day over 40. <laughs> Guess we'll all be buddies on the force together before long. I'm afraid you're a little too old to be starting a career with the department. That's all been fixed up. That's what I want to talk to Haspel about. See when I can get the exam taken and go to work. How do you mean, it's been fixed up? He's getting the age limitation waived for me. Said it wouldn't be any trouble at all. He'd just talk to the captain about it. Use his influence. Is he doing this just as a favor to you? Favor? <laughs> $500 worth of favor. You already gave him the money, did you? Sure did. You can see why I'm anxious to get to work. Can you give me the examination today? No, sir, I'm afraid not. Well, why not? I'm getting tired of being put off. What's all the delay? Well, sir, there are two things wrong here. First of all, you can't get regulations set aside by paying anyone. Second, the man who took your money wasn't really a police officer at all. Not a policeman? No, sir. But he showed me his badge and his card. Said right on it, Los Angeles Police, Sergeant Haspel. See? Sergeant Haspel. Yes, sir, we believe you. And I got suckered, is that it? Well, you're not the only one. He's taken some other people by impersonating a police officer. Is this the man who took your money? That's him. Do you know where we can find him? No idea. I didn't know where he lived. That's why I came down here to see him. Where and when did you give him your money? About two weeks ago. I met him in the Hollywood post office. I was looking at the posters of the criminals on the bulletin board. Thought I might pick up some reward money if I kept my eyes open, you know? Uh-huh. Well, this Haspel came up to me after I left. Said he noticed me reading the wanted posters. Said it was public-spirited citizens like me that helped the police out. <laughs> uh, we got to talking, and I told him I always wanted to be a policeman. Then he showed me his badge and gave me the pitch about getting the age limit waived. What about the money? We walked right to the bank, and I drew it out of my savings. Handed it to him right on the spot. Didn't he give you any address or phone number? Nope. Said he'd get in touch with me as soon as he could set up the examination. You know the rest. Bunko Fugitive Smith. Oh, yeah. There was, huh? How long ago? Uh-huh. Well, thanks very much. You bet. 
Well, now we know where he got the name. Do we? There was a Sergeant Haspel. He worked in the supply division. He retired in 52. Well, good. Let's get a hold of him. Maybe he can help us. He died last year. We continued to question the victim, Harold Huberman, but he could give us no further information about the suspect. We continued our efforts to trace the suspect through former associates. We finally succeeded in locating his wife in an apartment house in the Silver Lake District. 3.14 p.m., we talked with Elsie Mackin. It's been over a month since I saw Jay. He cleared out of here right after we moved in. Do you know where he's living? Having the faintest. Cloud nine, probably. Well, what do you mean? Real far out, that boy. You mean he's using narcotics? Not that I know of. He doesn't have to. He gets that way naturally. Do you ever hear from him? He phoned me once since he left. Where was he then? Didn't bother to ask. Oh, it's all over between him and me. I'm getting a divorce as soon as I can afford it. Well, can you tell us anything that might help us find him? Like what? Well, like what kind of work does he do? Who are his friends? Where does he spend his time? <laughs> Those are real tough ones. I'd say it all depends. Depends on what? Whatever mood he's in at the time. Do you know if he has a job now? I doubt it. The last I heard, he was going to be a colonel in the Air Force. A colonel? Think big. That's Jay's motto. He gets carried away with his ambitions. Unfortunately, he never gets carried out of the chair. You know, before he was going to be an Air Force colonel, he was going to be the world's greatest racing driver. And before that, he was going to go to India and become a yogi. You know it's too bad he didn't go. Do you know any of his friends? Who could be friends with a combination Jet Ace, Swami, and Bonnie Oldfield? Nobody I know. Well, all right. Did you or your husband know a Sergeant Haspel in the police department? Yeah, he was my uncle. Real nice old guy. He died about a year ago. What's that got to do with Jay? I don't really want to know anything more about him. But I suppose I should ask, what has he done now? He's been impersonating a police officer, using your uncle's name. Jay, a cop? Well, now, that's a hot one. Do you know if he has any girlfriends, someone he might see regularly? I don't know. No, no, I, I don't think so, unless it's recent. Jay never played around much. That's not one of his faults. We separated because of a different reason. Why? Well, he started acting nervous as soon as I told him I was going to have the kid. Oh, he acted like he was glad and everything, but I could see he was worried. You mean from the money angle? Yeah. <sighs> Jay always managed to get enough money. When he wanted to work, he could land a good job. But there was something about being a father he just couldn't stand. Yeah. So permanent. Frank and I drove back to the office where we found a bulletin from the Santa Monica Police Department. Same M.O. and description. Must be Mackin again. How'd he score this time? Well, he found a 64-year-old man in the bus depot. Watched him buy a ticket to San Diego, and then he stopped him when he got outside. Uh-huh. Told the old fellow that he'd used a counterfeit $5 bill to buy his ticket. The victim said that he had just gotten the money at the bank. The suspect walked him to the bank, identified himself to the teller as a police sergeant, and verified his story. <laughs> Some guts, huh? Yeah. And then he took the victim's wallet and told him to wait while he phoned headquarters to check him out. Walked out and left the old man sitting there. How much did he get? $340. Can we help you, son? Yes, sir. The guy downstairs told me to come up here. All right. You want to have a chair? I won't have to pay a fine, will I? Well, I don't know. That depends on what you've done. Will I have to go to jail? Well, what seems to be the trouble? Well, it must be pretty serious. I wouldn't be here in the first place. But I think you've got the wrong guy. You want to tell us your name? Bob Tepps. Robert, that is. Why'd you come see us, Bob? I didn't. I was brought. All right, then. Why were you brought? Now, uh, listen, if I'm going to be kept here, I better phone my parents. They're expecting me home. In fact, I should have been there half an hour ago. Well, all right. You can phone them if you like. Oh, um, boy, they're going to die when they hear I'm in jail. Well, you're not in jail, son. Same thing. Well, now, look, why don't you tell us the problem first before you phone, and then we'll know how serious it is. Okay. It started out real simple. All I did was make a right turn. A right turn? Yeah. I even signaled before I did it. But he didn't see that, because he was on the right side. Well, now, wait a minute. Did you hit anybody? 
No, but almost. Well, now you know this isn't traffic. This is bunco. I know. Uh, what's bunco? It means schemes to defraud people, taking money under false pretenses. The man at the desk told me to come here. I got tired of standing around. I must have waited for an hour and a half, so I asked him. What were you waiting for? For the other policeman to come back, the one that took my wallet to check me through R&I, whatever that is. What was the man's name, the one who took your wallet? Sergeant Haspel. You started to tell us how he happened to bring you in. Yeah. It was all because of that right turn. Just as I swung around the corner, he stepped off the curb to cross the street. I guess I almost ran over his toes. Well, where did this happen? On the fifth and Olive. He was trying to cross Olive when I turned into it. He yelled at me and ordered me to pull over right then. And you did? Yeah. He sounded like he meant it. He said right off that he was a policeman, and he flashed the badge at me. At first, I thought I actually hit him. He seemed so mad. Well, what did he say to you? First off, he gave me a big lecture on violating the right-of-way of pedestrians. Really chewed me out. Then he asked to see your driver's license. That's right. I handed him my wallet, and he looked at the license for a long time, then at me. Then he told me he'd have to bring me down to the station. Well, didn't you think that was unusual, just for a traffic offense? Well, that's what I said to him. But he told me I answered the description of a robbery suspect they've been looking for. So I'd have to come in with him while he checked me through R&I, whatever that is. That's records and identification. I was snowed. So I let him climb right in the car with me. We drove up here, and he told me to park the car across the street. Then we walked in downstairs. What happened after you got in the building? And we got in the elevator, and he took me up to the main floor. He told me to wait there in the hall until he came back. Did you see where he went? Just through a door with no name on it. I've never been in here before. All looks the same to me. And how long did you say you waited for him? About an hour and a half, I guess. I figured it'd be better for me if I didn't make any fuss. I knew I hadn't robbed anybody, and I'd be clear to that. But there was still that right turn business, and I didn't want to irritate him. Yeah, we understand. Anyhow, I finally got tired of waiting. So I looked around till I found a guy in uniform at the information counter. I told him the trouble, and he sent me up here. Is this the fellow who brought you in? Yeah, that's him. You want to phone your family now? No, I guess I'd better tell them in person about losing the money. That is, if I can go home now. Well, we'd like to get a crime report from you first, but you can go any time after that, unless you can tell us something else that might help. No, I can't think of anything. Did he talk to you while you were driving down here? Not a word. Except to remind me a couple of times what a lousy driver I was. Sure had me fooled. Well, he's fooled some others, too. You know, how was I to know? After all, he had a badge. It looked legitimate. You're not the first one that's been taken by this con man. Maybe I'd better tell you. He had something else that made me think he was a policeman. What's that? A gun? <laughs> We took a theft report from Tebbs, and we put out a supplementary on our local and APB covering Mackin's operations. It was also decided to put out a special MO bulletin to be distributed to all officers throughout Los Angeles County. This bulletin is published by the analysis section of planning and research, and contains a photograph of the suspect as well as a complete rundown of his MO. While the MO bulletin was being made and circulated, Mackin hit another victim. He had watched the victim cash a check and had followed him to a downtown hotel room. There he again impersonated a police sergeant and accused the victim of being a robbery suspect. He obtained the victim's wallet and money on the pretext of checking him out. He ordered the victim to remain in his room while he used the desk telephone to call the police department. Mackin then left with nearly $200 of the victim's money. Friday, May 2nd, we still had not turned up any lead on the whereabouts of the suspect. 10.52 a.m. I'm looking for Lieutenant Friday or Sergeant Smith. Yes, that's us. Carl's is my name. Want to sit down? This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Hi. I think I might have something for you on that ammo bulletin you put out. You know where to find Mackin? Well, I'm not positive, but you might want to check it out. Take a look at this. Thanks, Carl's. Well, this is a pedestrian citation for going against a red light. How does this tie in? 
Well, I think he might be your man. The name says Gail Bassert. Yeah, but all he had for ID was an old library card. He could have been a phony. You think he's our suspect? The minute I saw the picture on the M.O. bulletin, I remembered the face. He was wearing glasses at the time I gave him the ticket, but even so, I'd swear he was the same guy. Okay, Carls. We'll sure check it out. Thanks a lot. Well, I hope I've been some help to you. I think you have. Thanks again. Don't mention it. Well, might be a break. Yeah, let's just hope for one thing. What's that? That this address is better than the name. The address given on the traffic ticket turned out to be a small hotel on West 7. The clerk there identified a photograph of the suspect and said that he was registered under the name of Gail Bassard. It was not in his room. Frank and I parked the car in a position where we could cover the hotel entrance. An hour passed. Two hours. 1.35 p.m. Frank. All right, fella, hold it up. Your name Mackin? No, don't bother me. Not so fast. We'd like to talk to you. Look, get out of the way or I'll run you in. I'm a police officer. Is that right? Well, I'll show you. Get your hand out of your pocket and stand still. See, I'm Sergeant Haspel. Yeah, sure you are. Looks like you picked the wrong guy, doesn't it? Nope. What do you mean? You did. We took the suspect downtown and contacted several of the victims. Each of them positively identified Mackin as the man who had taken them. Confronted with the evidence, Mackin agreed to give us a statement. Sure, I'll sign your confession. Just be sure you give me credit for doing a good job. Tell the whole story. Well, now, maybe you better fill us in. Have you heard from a guy named Kelsey? One named Copeland? Not yet. I bet you don't, either. They're not going to come running in to complain. Why not? They paid off. They bribed me to drop the charges against them. It's a laugh, huh? I don't know, is it? <laughs> it kills me. Those suckers were so afraid they'd get 10 years for a passing counterfeit, they were as happy as clams to pay off and run. What'd you do with the money? Oh, I still got most of it. A savings account. I was getting to get the little nest egg. For what? I was going to take it up to Vegas, roll it into a real pile. I've been reading up on mathematical odds. Is that so? I'm going to be the biggest high roller of them all. I'll make Nick the Greek look like a penny any player. I can do it. You wait and see. Sure, sure. The same way you became a jet ace in the Air Force, or the way you became the world's greatest racing driver, or was it the way you became an Indian yogi? Now, you've been listening to Elsie. Maybe you should listen to her, fella. She could tell you a lot about yourself. Oh, a lot she knows. Now, you can't deny I made a good job of being a cop. Sure you did. Sure. Yeah, you even made the police building. October 16th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of grand theft, two counts. Grand theft is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail for a period of not more than one year, or in the state penitentiary for a period of not more than 10 years, each count. Thank <laughs> you.